Welcome to On Base Live in your Bleacher Report app. I am your host, Mookie Betts, and today we got A.A. Ron Judge. What's going on, brother? What's up, Mookie? How you doing, brother? I'm good, my man. Welcome back to Cali. I know this is your crib. Maybe not here, maybe uh, a little up north. But... Yeah, a little, a little farther north, but man, California's, California's home, man, so it's always good to be back here. You got your folks here, um, then they, don't, they always got to come to these games, right? Yeah, they don't miss it. They don't miss it, man. My dad grew up in in Southern California, so anytime he gets a chance to come out to Dodger Stadium and, and check out his old stomping grounds, man, he, he eats it up. So he he was coming to games and stuff all the time when he was younger as well. Yeah, when he when he was growing up, he came to a lot of Dodger games. I think he snuck in a couple times. Oh, really? Yeah, nice. yeah, he had he had some fun down here, but uh, you know it was it was crazy. He once we once he moved up to Northern California, yeah. man, he. He flipped to a Giants fan quick. Man. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't believe fair it. Weather. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he still he still enjoys it. He still yeah, enjoys no, it. No. So before we get all the way into Aaron Judge, I want to rattle off some stats, some accolades. I'm sorry, accolades. You were 20, 2022 AL MVP, four-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger, 2017 AL Rookie of the Year, and two-time Home Run Leader. That's dope, dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, but and the kicker is, you're actually really, 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 really good in the outfield. Like yeah. you're, you, you're huge, bro. It seems like when you're standing out there, you just take up the whole outfield, and then you run like a cat, dog. It's a long stride, bro. I got these long legs. It's that's. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to be like you out there. That's hey, it. Nah, <laughs> you get from point A to point B quick, and then you have the Rob of homers. Can we show the stat? There you go, right there. Oh yeah. So 12, 11, and 10. You know what I'm saying? You you rob a lot of homers dog, in the last 20 seasons. You rob a lot of homers. How, how do you, like, do you take pride in that when you, you when you go, I'm, I'm going to bring that thing down? Uh, I try to. You know, the thing that, you know, when you, when you and Mike get up there, man, you guys are jumping all the way up. You're reaching back. You rob it. For me, <laughs> at 6'7", when I jump, I, gotta, I jump, like, six inches off the yeah, ground, especially at home at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. I just got to lift my glove up, and I can rob it. So I think this is probably that last one I did was maybe – the best one. I kind of had to get up like you guys do, man. But no, it's it's fun. I try to take a lot of pride in it because I know the pitcher's working hard. Yep. You know, everybody out there is working hard on defense. I never wanted to be just a just a hitter. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. I want to take pride in my work out there. And you do everything on the defensive end. I mean, your arm is great. I mean, like I said, you every, everything. You you're five to a player, bro. So shout out to you, man. No, we got shout it. out to you. So I want to get get us on this this on base off base game. So it's basically called you in or out. And um, I think I've seen you like to, you're, you're Taylor Swift. You're, you're in a, you got to be in on her, right? Oh, yeah, that's on base. That's that, on you're base. on base. Yeah. So what's your favorite song by Taylor Swift? You know, I, I was early on Taylor Swift fan when she was a little more country. You know, uh, we'll, hide, we'll hide those songs that I like. We'll, we'll save those ones. But some for new stuff, man. You know, Bad Blood is what I said in this little video. With uh-huh, you. yeah, right here. You know, just... So it's like a good, well, it's a good morning song when you're getting ready, you know, getting ready to go to the park. You throw that on, man. It gets so, you in a good mood. So, so in your ride to the field, you listen to Bad Blood, or is it just before I before even put my okay? Before, before. So I'm getting dressed. You're, yeah. you're talking about okay? Because yeah, on the ride in, you got to get get your mind right. Yeah, you know, man, man, you got to get mentally locked in. So the Taylor Swift kind of happens, you know, brushing your teeth, getting ready for the day. Yep. A little Bad Blood, twenty two. Yep. You know, and then and then and then and then, did, did you did you ever go to the ear the Eras t- tour? I didn't. I didn't. A couple teammates did. You know, we had a we had a series against against the Padres, I think, then and Wait, I had family in town. Oh yeah, family in town. So you. everybody else went. I think Rizzo, he grabbed a couple t shirts and sweatshirts. Oh, he yeah. was at the merch he was grabbing all the merchandise, man. He was he was killing it. <laughs> did he get you something? No, he didn't. He didn't. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take like it. I'll that. find something. Oh I'll yeah, make something. sure you talk to him. Okay, so what about uh Jimmy Butler? You think Jimmy Butler's gonna win his first ring? You in or out on that? He is going to win his first ring, in or out. You've seen Denver, right? I got my opinion. <laughs> All right, we can talk about it. Okay, okay, hold on. Let me. I'm, I'm off base on that one. Okay. You All know, right. I, I'm a fan of Jimmy. You know, he's, you know, what he's done the past couple of seasons, his whole career, basically, man. He's just a such a great competitor. He brings it every single night. He elevates his teammates. But seeing what I see with Denver, the Joker, you know Jamal Murray, Porter Jr. Man, it's they just I just don't think that he can keep up. Yeah, there's man, too many options. It's too many options. They have to play too much defense, and then it's just gonna be a lot. 
it's just gonna be a lot. But it's a fun series though. They got it, they got some ball players, so I'm, they do. It's it, fun to watch. Good. We'll see. I, I'm curious to see game two and, and see how that goes, and then uh, and then I'll know more. But right now I'm 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 off. I'm off in the same way. So what about? It's, I know this is a New York thing. Putting bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll and not a bagel. Is that are you are you is, are you that? Is that much New York in your blood? So what is it? Am I bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll and not a bagel? And if you don't know right now, by the time this show is over, you gonna find out. I'm I'm, I'm off it right now. You're off, off it. it. Yeah. So you like it on a bagel? And I'm a bagel guy. Yeah. yeah you're ba- what, what kind of bagel? I'm a little onion. The onion bagel. Oh my god. Don't even. Don't even. <laughs> Oh, this is disgusting. We You're the couple- second person. I was playing my video game, and, and this girl, she she was from New York, and she said the the garlic onion bagel in the morning. Don't hate. Don't hate. You're a garlic? No, nah, but it's got to be loaded with bacon, egg, and cheese. Plain, if I'm doing a plain bagel. You don't even do those. Yeah, I don't even do those. Yeah. You, you got you to gotta load them up. So you just wake up breath funky. <laughs> Golly. Man, see... Stay over there. Yeah. Ah, look. Okay, so what about this? What about this? Bringing your dog to, dog to work. Oh, I'm on, on base, hundred percent. Base See, is loaded. I seen that, yeah, and yeah. you had you had man, that little bitty dog. Did he just fit in your hand? I mean, he's not even a small dog. It's just that you just that big. Yeah, that's a you golden. That's a golden retriever. The camera's fooling you guys, man. Oh, that's I a, thought that was okay. <laughs> That yeah okay that's the go okay right there that's the golden retriever right yeah. there okay oh yeah right. you know what yeah. so that's my man yeah. I got two dogs that's, that's Gus that's Gus yep he's got an older sister Penny who's mm-hmm. also Penny didn't want to make the trip you know Penny's been at Yankee Stadium mm-hmm. and I felt like it was time that Gus got the call up to the big leagues okay you know, and kinda... so and you guys had a ball yeah we Gus, Gus looked like he's having the time of his life yeah so what time was that what time were you out there so I think it was around twelve twelve thirty so you was there early yeah I had to. Cause some, I was hoping the cameras didn't catch me. I'm trying to get out there early. Oh, so you run around a little bit, you know. You were hoping the cameras didn't catch you. Yeah, and, and they were locked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, you. Yeah, okay. they were locked in from the beginning. But it was, it was a good time. You know, it was a good little good little reset. You know, I try to do that every once in a while because it's it's tough to take a couple dogs to Central Park and run around, man. So here, I know I got the freedom. Yeah, you can do whatever you need to do. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, so let me take take me to this because I didn't experience this, and you did. Your free agency. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. Like, how how was that? Like, because I've talked to some people, and some people think it's, it's it's stressful, and some people enjoy it. And so, I want to hear from your perspective. Like, how was it stressful? Was it enjoyable? Man, it was it was stressful. You know, that's the one thing. Like you said, like throughout our whole career, all the veteran guys are always like, "Hey, wait till you're free agent, mm-hmm. man. It's the best time. Get to choose where you want to go. You finally get to make your own decision on you know where you want to play." and make a home and you know for me getting drafted by the Yankees man that was such a gift and you know I, you know, there's no better place for me but kind of getting to the point of okay now I'm a free agent they didn't lock me up it's like let's let's see what's out there mm-hmm. you know and you didn't take it personally just because teams don't lock you up that, that that's not a personal thing. they got to take care of their business as well so I'm assuming you didn't take that personally no it was it's it's all part of it you know yeah. we they, we tried contract extensions you know before my last season, it, did, it didn't work out. Then, you know, it's my time to go out there and play the game. Like, I'm still a Yankee. Right. I still got this last yeah. year. You know, something could happen during the season. And, you know, so I didn't take it personal. It was just part of the business. I got to go check out, you know, see what's out there. But, man, in the back of my mind, it was, you know, it was always, always New York, man. So, so, so there was a tweet. Um, and what, what was the tweet? Can we show what the tweet was? I don't remember. I think there was a tweet, and you were you went back home to San Fran for a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, I think my name changed a little bit. I yeah, think there's so still, there's still... <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. What, what is that? What was that? You, you know, know anything about that? You know, I was actually on a, I was on a flight, and my agent texted me. Said he said, "Bro, you were stuff's going down in San Diego right now." And I'm like, "What, what are you talking San about?" San Diego. Like, okay. Yeah. So I guess this happened kind of at the right there, the winter meetings. Arson Judge. Yeah, Arson Judge. He's still. I haven't seen his stats yet with the Giants. But, mm-hmm, me neither. Yeah, it was. It was be pretty good though. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. It was funny. Like that. That kind of blew up a little bit, and I started getting a couple text messages from family and friends, and 
you know, people with the Yankees, kind of what's going on. But you went to the Giants. Yeah, me going to the Giants. So it and, was. And so you were, were you, did you get excited about that? Like, yeah, we're going to the Giants. Like, I didn't even get to choose. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the one time I get to choose, I didn't get to choose. <laughs> you didn't you know? get to choose. So, so that the, you got home to San Fran. Were you? Were you? That was this all playing the game? Like, was this all like you know? I really, I really, truly in my heart want to go back to New York. Or did you not really? I mean, you cared, right? Yeah. But like, were you like you know? I just I'm open to new beginnings. I'm open to new things. You know what? What, what was your mindset going through that? You know, I, I wanted to stay in New York. I always wanted to be in New York. But I think. Looking at it, I was like, I think I'd kick myself down the road if I just didn't go through the process. Just yeah. check out the process, see what other teams have to offer, see what, you know, I got to meet a lot of great coaches, yep. a lot of great front offices, other players with other teams, and just kind of see how they ran things, you know, what their mindset was. And you know, at the end of the day, what it came down to me was winning. You know, I want to win. Yep. Man, you won, you got two yep. World Series rings, you know, back home. And for me, that's, that was my main goal. So go, looking through all the options, looking through all the teams we talked to, it always came back to which team's going to give me the best opportunity to win. And, you know, New York is always at the top of that list. Yeah. So when I, when I, when I had heard you were going to the Giants, my heart kind of sank a little bit because I was like, man. You didn't want to see me? Dog, I want to <laughs> see you. I, and I, I want to see you, but I don't want to see you in right field when I'm in there with you. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't. I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, the Giants, they're already – it's already like a, a, a rivalry, you know, and and now they're going to be so good, you know. You, you, but you were going to add to that team. And so I'm like, oh, my gosh. And, and I know I know the, the media, they make this me versus you thing, right? They always do that. Yeah. And and just, just telling you, like, it ain't – I ain't never felt like it's a me versus you thing. I, I feel like there's definitely space for both of us to be great. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and, and and I think that's one thing that we've always kept in common. Like every time we've come in and in interact with each other, it's always been respect. You know, it's always been love. When I watch you, I'll, I want you to do great. And I feel, you know, I can't speak for you, but I'm just telling you from my perspective. So when I saw you sign with the Giants, bro, I was I was happy, but I was hurt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But now you're back in New York, so... So, so is there was there any stories or anything that kind of happened within the free agency that that are kind of untold, like that people that don't see? You know, what I'm saying like you went to you went somewhere and you had to do this and you got on the plane to head this head to this place, but you weren't actually going to do. You know, just little things that you may have happened that people don't see. Man, now I think the biggest thing was I was at. I think it was a Sunday night football game in Tampa watching mm-hmm. the Bucks play the Saints. And also my agent calls me. It's like 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock. And he's like, hey, we got to get you on a flight out to these winter meetings. Oh. I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? I got a flight in two days with my wife to go out to Hawaii. We're going out there for a little vacation. What do you mean I've got to go to San Diego? And he's like, no, nah, we got to, you know, just stuff, stuff buzzing. Teams are calling. Like, we got we to get you here, like, ASAP, like, in the morning. So it was just stressful times like that, like hopping on a flight, flying all night there, staying in San Diego just for a couple hours just to hop on another flight to head out to Hawaii, man. It was, oh, so you had to do, yeah. It was just in and out, like a little covert mission, man. Yeah. You know, just <laughs> pop in there, pop out. and People don't see that type of stuff, man. Yeah, no, they think it's all like you're getting wine and dined by these teams and everything's great, man. It's, it's stressful just because you're thinking about your family. You're thinking about, you know, where you want to, you know, keep your legacy going yeah, where you yeah. want to start a legacy. And it's, so now you have your legacy in New York. So you signed this nine year 360. What was the first thing you bought? Oh, I bought my wife a house. That was, that was number one on my <laughs> list. You know, she was, she was tired. I had a, I had a nice little, a condo apartment yep. uh, in Florida. And then I got a condo in New York and she's like, Hey, I'm, I'm done. With the condo to condo, yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I need I need some space. Gus and Penny need some grass to run around. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that was that was the first thing on our list is is getting a house. And you know, she's kind of what did you buy? Did you buy you anything? Watch something? Not really. I'm, I'm still I'm still waiting for these first couple of checks to come through. You know, <laughs> <All> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta wait a second. I gotta All right. wait. So so you ain't got nothing. Hey, it's it's early, man. It's just June. Give me give me some time. Give me some time. The first I would have bought it as soon as I ain't had it yet. (laughs) Give me a necklace or something. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I gotta. You gotta get something, bro. You gotta get something. Give me give me till 
Give me to the All Star break. All Star break. Let me work with something. I see you at the All Star game. I'll, I'll have some. something. Something. <laughs> something. So then you became the captain of the Yankees. How how does that work? Like, how do you get named captain? What what is that process? Because that's that's super dope, bro. The captain of the Yankees. Like yeah. that's what kids dream of, and you doing it. So how how did that happen? It was wild, you know. I was actually, I was at my parents' house because my wife and I were flying from Northern California out to Hawaii, like I said. So we were just staying at my parents' house. Just got back from San Diego. It's like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm actually hopping on a call with Hal, basically saying, like, hey, you know, are we going to get this deal done? I'm, I'm hearing all these other offers from other teams. I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay here. You know, what are we going to do? And he's like, what's it going to take? You know, I, I throw out some numbers. He's like, done deal. That's it? That's mm -hmm. it? And I said, yeah. So... He's like, all right, deal's done. And, oh, by the way, um, you know, Thurman Munson was my favorite player growing up as a kid. And, you know, he was a Yankees captain. And I want to I want to make you the next Yankee captain, man. And, man, I, I was sitting there on speakerphone with my wife, and I got chills. I didn't know what to say. I felt like I didn't say anything for, like, 30 minutes. <laughs> She's, like, hitting me, like, you got to say something. You, say something, you know? So, you know, just hearing him say that um, and then having the press conference in New York, you know, mm -hmm. having Derek there. Uh, having Willie Randolph, you know, two former captains there as well, it's it was an incredible honor, man. It's something that, you know, you never think about. You do, right. I'm just trying to go out there just like you every single day and be a good teammate, you know, be a good competitor, you know, uplift my teammates. Yep. You know, so when you get that kind of title, man, there's there's more responsibility, but it's still just about you going out there and just taking yeah, care what of is, business. What is what is what comes with it? Like, what, what other responsibilities? I think just... Or is it just like you just... You're kind of the cap, like anything, everything kind of flows through you. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. That kind of thing. And I, and I know you probably keep an open ship, like everybody kind of, there's other vets in there that kind of do their thing, but like you're the kind of the, the you're just the, the guy. That's that's super cool, man. That, that's super cool. So do you get any perks? Like you get to be. I get a nice parking spot at the stadium. Nice, yeah, nice it's all right. A little, a little closer. I'm a little closer now to the door, so it, it helps out. <laughs> it helps out. <laughs> all right. So before, before we get deeper into Aaron, we want to, I want to know who Aaron Judge was before Aaron Judge now. So you, you played three sports in high school. What sports mm -hmm. did you play? Football, baseball, and basketball. Which which sport do you feel like you were best at? Man, I love football. You football know. football for me, you just had a different you have a different mindset. Like mm -hmm. in football you get hit, man, I can get angry and it's gonna help me hit that guy across you know, across from me or go out there and make a play. In baseball you get angry, man. Man, you putting up these old highlights. <laughs> <laughs> Look at oh, you now. Oh, man. You know, <laughs> no, we had, we had fun with football, man. It was just. Friday Night Lights, boy. I bet, yeah. I, I bet, man, I I remember I didn't play football. Mom, mom didn't let me play football. But I was, if there was ever a Hall of Fame for Water Boys, <laughs> me right here. I, I mean, there was not one man that went thirsty. You know, I was there, coaches, anybody, everybody, mm -hmm. referees. Mm -hmm. I was I was the best water boy of all time so if you were in the nfl i would probably be a great water boy for you but you're in the mlb so i, I uh, hey speaking of speaking of you know your mom didn't didn't let you play that was the same thing with me like i, remember, I went into my freshman year of high school walking around campus and the football coach saw me he says who are you and why are you not on my field right now mm. i said i play ba i play basketball and baseball i don't know what to tell you he said come try out come sign up so i go home tell my mom dad like hey some football coach wants me to come Try out in the field, and she's like, "Nah, <laughs> no way." I'm like, wow. "Mom, I'm I'm six six, like I'm bigger than everybody." What, like, what do you? You say this is your freshman year? Yeah, six six. Okay, cool. We'll keep like, going. <laughs> I'm like, "What do you? What are you worried about?" She's like, "Let's give it a year. You stay up on your grades, and maybe as a sophomore you can go out there." So, I was fine with my grades. Didn't play that freshman year, but then sophomore year, I said, "You can't, you can't fight it now." I'm going out yeah. there. So, so you wanted to play football? Yeah, because all my friends, all my all okay. my boys growing up were were playing football, you know, and I usually was playing you know, basketball during the summer, all, all year round, baseball all year round. So I really didn't have time to fit, you know, football into it. And then once I got to high school, it was kind of like, man, I, I got nothing to do on a Friday night. I got I to figure something out. <laughs> okay. So, so, so how, how was there a choice to play football in college? Or did you, did like, for you personally, like, did you, were you like, I may want to play football in college or was it always baseball? Man, it was always baseball. Always. Like, I, I love basketball. I love love football, mm -hmm. but baseball just it was just always in the back of my mind, man. I just I just Calling. love playing it. Yeah, like it just 
the game within the game that people don't see, I always love that. Just the chess match between the pitcher and the hitter, the catcher and the yep. hitter. Uh, just little things, man. It just intrigued me at a young age. And, and man, you get you get beat up. I mean, I know you love playing basketball. Like, you get beat up playing basketball, yeah, running up and down yeah. those courts. Oh, yeah. You get beat up in football, you oh, know, yeah. every single play. Yeah. So, for me, I was thinking more longevity, too. I was like, hey, if I can, you know, make something work with this baseball thing, like, hopefully I could have a long career down the road and, you know, set up my family for life. So, you got drafted, didn't go. Yeah. Why didn't you, why didn't you, why didn't you want to sign? Man, I don't know how you got drafted out of high school, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know how you guys do that. Like, like mentally and physically, like I just didn't feel like I was ready yet. To... And you're not. Uh, you're not. I, I wasn't. When I got drafted, I wasn't. Mine. I, I decided purely based off the money I got. Mm-hmm. And I went, and I was. I wasn't. Like I was calling my boys and crying, calling my mom, calling Bree. I mean, I was crying. Like I'm not ready for this. Half the people don't speak English. You know what I'm saying? And 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 you go and, and you're 18 year old kid. You just went from high school. So you were with everybody two weeks ago. Yeah. And then you go to a place where I don't know anybody. Mm-hmm. And you gotta play a game, find a way to feel comfortable to play a game that you ain't never played. And you're a professional now. You know what I'm saying? And then you get a whole bunch of money yeah. at 18 years old. Yep. You don't know how to really act. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So my parents, fortunately, I was raised in great household my parents you know were able to get hold of me and make sure i was good my boys make sure i was good and this that, and the other but no you don't so you're right you're right to that to that perspective and, and what you just said right there like i think that's the biggest difference i saw in a lot of the high school guys and college guys that made it through and made it to the major leagues was they had a support system and mm-hmm. they had people around them family friends that kind of said hey knock, go ahead, knock that off man yeah you, yeah, you don't yeah. need to be in that like you yeah. got to you know, keep your eye on the prize, man. That's so, because I'd had so many friends that in the game, you know, like you said, get drafted, you make a lot of money. All of a sudden, they're they're buying everything they want. They're forgetting about investing. Like, yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. they're done in a couple of years, and they don't have. They got a high school diploma. They got no more money. It's it's tough, man. But like you said, like thankfully we both have I great parents yeah. and just yeah. people around. So you us. ended up going to college and you had fun in college, mm-hmm. and, and and got drafted, or whatever. Now you're with the Yankees. And you got hurt your first year. Mm-hmm. How was that? Like, like how, when you were hurt and didn't really know you, you were in a professional sport, but couldn't really play. Like, how? What was your mind? What was your mind at that time? Right after I got drafted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tore my quad in college, my junior year. Mm-hmm. So, like, my last probably three weeks of the season, I was just DHing, and all the scouts kept asking, like, "Why is this guy DHing?" And it's like, well, I couldn't. I couldn't even run mm-hmm. around the bases, really. And, we're, you know, we're trying – I'm trying to get drafted, trying to – you know, I didn't want my – you know, the stock to fall, whatever yeah, it is. So we kind of kept that silent. So it was funny. I got got out to Florida, Tampa, first couple of days, we're like running the bases, doing conditioning stuff. And they see me like kind of hobbling around the bases. They said, man, what is wrong with you? And I said, I got nothing, nothing, nothing's wrong, you know. <laughs> and they said, no, nah, go, let's go inside and check something out. So it was, it was tough that first year because you're like, you know, top draft pick. Yep. You know, you want to make a good impression. Like you said, like you're just meeting all these new people who are in the same position you are. You want to make a good impression. These are your future teammates. You know, and I'm sitting in here on the training table. Like, it's, it was rough that first year. That's why, you know, I was calling, <laughs> calling my parents all the time, <laughs> calling my agents. Yeah, like, ah, yeah. you know, maybe I should have went back one more year at Fresno. Was this the right decision? But, you know, it, it all worked out eventually, man. And, it all does. It, all, it always does. Yeah. And so then you're going through the minor leagues, and when you – how, how was did, how was your minor league experience? Did you enjoy it, or, or was it like were you just grinding the whole time? No, I loved it. You know, I, you got to love that grind, man. You yeah. know, you know how it is. Like yeah. you got to love those those ups and downs. So for me, my first first year playing was in Low A Charleston. You know, was there for half the year. Got called up to High A in 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 Tampa, and like first half I'm hitting three thirty. Second half when I get up to Tampa, get called up, I'm hitting like two forty. Mm-hmm. You know, so that was kind of a grind. Mm-hmm. It's like. Oh, I'm hitting 330. Like this is this is Pro Bowl. Like yeah. I'm gonna be up in the bigs soon. Yeah. I'm looking at the roster. Like okay, I, I can I can make it up here. And yeah. um, you know, then you kind of get hit in the face when you get up to a new level, new pitching, new environment. Um, game speeds up just a little yeah. bit. So you know, it, it was tough. Then the next year, starting out in Double A, everything's going great in Double A. All of a sudden, you get moved up to Triple A, and the same thing. I'm hitting like 230. Yeah. You know, kind of a shock, and you just see how close you are to the big leagues, but it still feels so far away. But you know, I, I enjoyed it, man. Like like I said earlier, like 
I had so many good friends around me that I could talk to. And yeah. when I wasn't feeling right, I'm like, man, this I, I'm never gonna make it to the big mm -hmm. leagues. I'm getting struck out, you know, three, four times in a game in in, in AAA. Like, I don't. How am I gonna expect to go up in the big leagues and and perform? So it was. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun, fun man. Yeah. yeah, I enjoyed it. Like so then, so then you you're in the big leagues, and I'm assuming at some point you had you went through a swing change. Mm -hmm. I know I did in 18, and I remember when I went through my swing change. That was the worst spring training I'd ever had in my life. I think it was like two for 54 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it took it took time, and I questioned myself. Like I don't, I'm not who I am anymore. Like I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know how to hit anymore. <clears throat> and so I didn't know, like, when you went through your swing change and your, your, your swing, your hitting coach, yeah. how was that whole process? Because for me, it sucked until yeah. we got to the time. And now, you know, now I know how to maintain and I can keep exactly. it and whatever. So no, it, it was... It was, it was scary, man. But it was. Did it take a whole off season? How long did it take for you to? Yeah, so 2016 in the big leagues for like two months in the year, I hit 179, like mm -hmm. brutal, getting booed, like man, this this ain't <laughs> this ain't for me, you know. And um, you know, actually, it was my agent that brought up, hey, I got this you know, hitting coach that I work with a little bit, you know, near the end of my career. He still works with guys. I think you should check him out. I said, <laughs> I was like, Dave, give me anybody because <laughs> I'll, I'll take anything over the 179 and yeah. the performance I put out there. So. I flew out to Arizona to meet him. I actually went with Rob Refsnyder, who's with the, okay. the Red yeah, Sox yeah. right now. We both well, had the I same. I came up with him. Well, oh, I, didn't, I played against him all, yeah. all, oh, yeah. all, all the time. But yeah. So we, had, we got the same agent. So, you know, we both went out to Arizona. We're hitting in the cage with this guy. And Mookie, I'm telling you, he, he watched me hit a little bit. And he said, hey, try this, this, and this. I made a couple of changes. And, bro, I'm telling you like that. I hit a couple of balls. And I, it was, like, instantly different. I felt mm -hmm. like... I've never hit a baseball like that. Like, okay. Because for me, like, as a big guy, I was taught, like, you know, kind of swing more down. Like, you want hard line drives. And I'm like. That's what everybody, <laughs> they, you know. <laughs> that's what everybody, yeah. That's for me, though. Yeah. That's for people like me. <laughs> not for you. Okay. Man, so, like, I'm started, like, I started elevating the ball a little better. Not, I'm not saying, like, hitting the top of the net, but, like, just. Getting it off like, the ground. Yeah, just getting it getting off, the, off ground. the ground. You know, so I remember getting back in the car with Rob right after we hit for, like, an hour or two. And I said. Bro, I think I'm hitting 50 homers next year. Mm. Like, kind of joking around, but I just I could see the change and like the difference. And also now, for me, what helped out too was he was breaking down videos. Like, hey, look at these, like, look at these guys in the big leagues and what they're doing. And now look at your video and what yep. you're doing. So for me, that was a cool experience to be able to finally, like, you, you see your film and you think like I got it figured out. But then I'm like, well, I don't look like any of these great hitters. Right. But. These guys are hitting 300, hitting 30 homers a year. I'm hitting 179 with four homers. Mm -hmm. There's a difference here. So getting a chance to kind of learn how to look at guys' swings, learn how to see, like, okay, when things are going wrong, why is it going wrong? Okay, well, I'm not on legs here. I'm, I'm jumping forward or I'm, you know, not staying back. Just, just little things like that. Mm -hmm. So that spring training, you know, show up. And, you know, obviously the organization wants you to, like, you just hit 179. They have their ideas of how yeah. they want you to change, so they kind of gave me some Oh, so they, did they not know about it? No, they didn't know. Okay, that's so, cool. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah that's, that's, that's normal. So, like, I, I'm in there doing all these funky drills. I'm doing yeah. stuff they've never seen. They're like, hey, <laughs> they're telling me, like, hey, I don't think this is going to work. Yeah. Like, we need to cut this out. Like, you need to widen out, like, put the ball in play. Like, you just need to get your average up. And I said, guys, just get trust me. Average. Like, okay. like, if I'm going to go down, if I'm going to be out of the MLB, like, I'm gonna do it my way. Oh my you know, turn. like yeah. I'm, let me let me just, you know, if I fail this this first year in, in 17, like that's on me, and then I'll, mm -hmm. I'll figure something out. So, so it was a little tough, like you said in spring training. Like people were questioning it. You know, I got hitting coaches kind of on me about this ain't gonna work. Cut mm -hmm. it out. But they're they're all looking for your best interest, right. man. They for want sure. they want for you sure. to succeed. Sure. So, it, and so I, you had so you had so so then take us take me back to 62. Mm -hmm. Number 62 when you hit it. Because, I mean, you're just hitting home runs right and left. I mean, like, at this point, I feel like every time you touch it, it's a home run. You know what I'm saying? Like, every, every, every stadium you go yeah. to, it, it's, it's like when it's 200 feet for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you know, it, it's, it's kind of not fair, but it is fair, too. Because, mm -hmm. like, hitting is hard, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hitting is hard for no matter what shape, size you are. Yeah. And it just helps 
to be big, but still to, to hit. You don't just hit power. You like you get hits. You walk. You do everything hitting. So take me back. This is this is take me take me through this. Can we run this one more time? Like I want to know some emotions, some feelings. Like as soon as you hit it, like you know how, how, what was going through your head. Man, well, we could pause it if we could pause it before this. This is the second game of a doubleheader before the last. Oh, this day. is oh, this is game two. This is game two, and before that, I was literally playing every single day from basically July and August. You know, kind of going for this. I really wasn't going for it, but as a competitor, you're like, you know, if I just have a good swing, good at bass, yeah. you know, we're gonna have a chance at this. So. This is after I don't know, 40, 50 games straight. You know, mentally beat up, physically beat up. You know, every game at home, Yankee fans are standing up on their feet. Yeah. They're cheering. Before, that's probably as nerve wracking, man. Man, you know, not really nervous, but just you don't want to let the fans down, man. Okay. You know, they're yeah, there. Yeah. They want to see something. They want to be a part of history. You know, they've been with me through this whole journey, throughout the whole year, throughout my whole career. Like, you want to do it at home. You want to do it mm-hmm. in front of those fans. So, you know, it was tough. Like, I I started leading off. Which is yeah, which is tough, man. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know how you do that, but like I lead off the game, I hit a double, and it almost like a sense of like, uh, man, like so. Which was weird because I'm like, man, we're still trying to win this game. Yeah. Like, what, what are we doing here? It wasn't like, even about the game at that point for the for, for them. Yeah, so for us, for me too. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, finally we get to this last. We got this doubleheader. I remember t- telling Skip, he's like, hey, like, I think it may be sitting either the first game or second game. I said, hey, let me play the first game. We'll see how it goes. First game, nothing. I may have won one for four. I don't know what happened. And he calls me in the office. Hey, like, maybe sit you this next game. I said, nah, Skip, give me, give me another one. Give me another one. Just <laughs> give me, give me, give me a chance here. I, I got a good feeling. I got a good feeling. I went straight to the cage. I'm in the cage. I'm hitting. I'm with our hitting coaches and uh, Casey, our assistant coach, is in there with me. And he's like, bro, just <laughs> relax a little bit. It's, it's gonna mm-hmm. come. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So in my mind, going up to that. That's the first inning, my first at bat, the second game. I said, you know what, man? Like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But you knew it was going to happen. Exactly. You, you know, you know it's going to happen, but you just want to get over you with. You want to get it over with. Because, like, even the pic- the video, like, my teammates jumping on the field, the way they're reacting, like, they were in, in it with me. Mm-hmm. You know, they kind of weren't even talking to me for a couple weeks either because they're like, oh, we don't really? want to jinx this. We want to, mm-hmm. you know, go do your thing. They, it was. So was it like as you're going on this this pace? Was it like okay, guys? I get it. I'm hitting homers, but I just want to be normal for a little bit. Like, I just want to – I don't want it to be about that. I want to still play the game. I want to still win the game. You know what I'm saying? Because you seem like that kind of guy, like, hey, you know, I know I'm doing this, but I also want to keep it on us. You know what I'm saying? I think that's why you got to see. Yeah, you know? for sure. But they did a good job of that. Like, you know, they didn't, they didn't talk about it. They just talked about the game. They talked okay. about winning. Okay. So, for me, that helped me kind of keep my mind off it because I go to my teammates and, you know, they knew what was weighing on me, but they never, they never wanted to bring it up yeah. or be like, hey – how you doing? You doing all right? They're just kind of like, hey, good swing there, man. Or like, hey, what do you think of that play? They just, they just did a good job of distracting me, man. And that's why, you know, getting a chance to share a moment like that, you know, with my teammates who yeah. grinded with me all year is, yeah. was so special. You spending so much time with those guys, like they know how to handle. They 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 know you just as much as you know you. You know what I'm saying? So that's good. So as you were going, were you like, I'm I'm gonna break this record this year? Did you ever think to say that in your head? Like I, I'm gonna, or was it just like? I don't know. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Not really, you know, because the media, you know, two months in are like, oh, you're on pace for 68 homers, this and that. I'm like, I'm pace. Like, what's yeah? What's that mean in May? That don't mean nothing for me in yeah, May. Yeah, you know, yeah. let's let's talk, let's talk in September. Yep. And then as it started getting closer and closer, it, they wanted to talk about it, but then I was like, man, I, I got a game to focus on. Yeah, so yeah. it was, it was tough. I, I avoided. I didn't say I avoided the media for a while, but. Yeah, but you- they just didn't see me in my locker until after the game. <laughs> but so speaking of on pace, you're there. I'm sure you probably heard it. You're probably kind of, you're you're back on pace for again, right? Um, but there you go, right there. And you're not going up there just trying to hit homers. You're just going up there and hitting. I mean, there's the the numbers show you're just going up there and hitting. Yeah. And I think that's that's super 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 dope, bro. Because hitting has gotten when we when we first started <clears throat> to now. Hitting is so much harder. Different game, bro. Different it's game. So you're literally hitting against a computer as yeah. well as, you know what I'm saying? 98, 100. 98 and yeah. 100, yeah. you know? And that's every night. Yeah. It's every, every single night. So you have all these pers- personal accolades, and then <clears throat> for, for what, what, do you, what do you contribute a lot of 
these personal things, do you ever like take that with the team as well? Like, hey, you know, my team is the reason why I'm able to be so good. You know what I'm saying? Like, is do you ever contribute a lot of that to the to your teammates? Because like I said, you spend a lot of time time with these guys. And for you to go do that, like you had to have that support system around you. Oh, for sure. Every and and the and the fans as well. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Man, every, every little like that's all the stats that you brought up there. Only reason why they're like that is because the guys I'm hitting behind, the guys I'm hitting in front of, like getting a chance to, you know, last year hit behind DJ LeMahieu all year, and that guy is literally on base two or three times people a night. People forget that. People forget, people don't. They don't realize that. Then they realize then I think about you know Anthony Rizzo, John Carlos Stanton, who's Jay, balling. balling. Yeah, who are guys that are putting thirty homers out every year, thirty plus homers. Um, you know, so they're giving me a chance. It's like teams got to pick. They're like, okay. We got LeMahieu on first. We have Judge up. We got Stanton behind him. We got Rizzo behind him. Like, we really don't want Rizzo or Stanton coming up with two or three guys on base. Like, we got we to gotta pitch to this guy. So, you know, that happens over the course of the year. You're going to get pit, better pitches a hit. And, you know, just That's good, though. for me, don't swing and miss. So, it's always about my teammates. Any any awards you get, any team, it's always it's, it's always about the good. team, man. Yeah. Like, even, like, you're watching your MVP season in, in 2018, man, like, you had so many guys on base, and yeah, the biggest thing well, is you just came, you just came up, you just did your job. Like yeah, you didn't overthink it. Do. You just did your job. You got guys on base. Well, I, I just got to drive them in. Or if no one's on base. Well, I got to get on base so the guys behind me yeah. can drive me in. That so. year, JD won two silver sluggers. Man, that was that you was. You know nuts. what I'm saying? We had that in our lives. <laughs> How you went two? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so so being now that now that I'm with the Dodgers and we had I, the Giants, and I guess you could say the Padres, like mm-hmm. our rivalries. You right. Mm-hmm. Tell me about, tell me your take on the Red Sox Yankees rivalry, because I can tell you mine. Like, you know, I want to hear your take on it. Or actually, you know, I'll go first. I'll yeah, okay, go first. okay. I think the Red Sox Yankees rivalry is is probably the best in sports, and I say that because both teams are always good, mm-hmm. and it, this may be fan driven, but like it seems like it's always hostile. You know what I'm saying? Like, we play the Yankees. I don't care if we're both in last. Or, you know, <laughs> we're both tied for last. Like, it's going to be a hostile game. Yep. We're trying to beat you. You're trying to beat us. And it's just we'll do anything to win. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I remember I remember when we, uh, when we had our brawl. Mm-hmm. And uh, Joe Kelly had hit Tyler Austin. And I'm in right field. I'm like, oh, my gosh, here we go. <laughs> so, so... Everybody runs in. Y'all are on, on the field. Mind you, y'all had everybody that was 6'5 and taller on your oh team. Gosh. So I had Tommy Canely, who he's 6'2, he's but he's a wrestler. He yeah. loves wrestling. Yeah. Then Dylan Batances, 6'8. Chapman. Chapman. Uh, Chad Green. Yeah. Right behind me. Yeah. In right field. They were coming too. <laughs> Man, I slowly walked. Cause, and I saw them. Phew, phew, phew. Let me let me let them go first. Yeah. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And y'all was too big, man. But that that like perfectly depicts the the Red Sox Yankees rivalry. So I want to hear your 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 take on it. No, like you said, every single time we play, it didn't matter if it was a Tuesday in May or a Friday night at Fenway in you know September, the place was packed. Yankee yeah. Stadium was packed. Fenway was packed. And, you know, the, f- the fans just brought it every single time. Like, they, mm-hmm. they raised the energy level from the very first pitch. Yep. Like, you could see, like, when you step in the box, the guy in the mound is a tick, a tick better. Like, his velo is a little up mm-hmm. on both sides. Everything. <laughs> so it was just – that's what you want as – that's what you want as a ball player, man. You want the best. And, man, I, I miss those. I'm, I'm glad I'm watching you do your thing at Dodger <laughs> Stadium so I'm not seeing you hit – you know, homer after homer, you know, over the monster, over my head in right field, man. But it was, no, nah, it's it's a blast. Like you said, that's a, that's the best rivalry in sports. So I think. Have you ha- did you have like uh, in Boston? Did you have people like talking crazy? Like I know you had people. Do- what's some good oh, stuff? What's man. some? Good- Give me something good that you heard. heard. That's kind of, <laughs> yeah, you know, that you can keep say on air. Man, I think just the craziest thing to me is you know I like you, know, you play you warm up in between innings, yep. you know, toss a ball to you know some kids. Yeah, I saw a couple of kids there with some Red Sox stuff. And I'm like, I'll, I'll toss them a ball. You know, they're, they're kind of waving, like, hey, ball. Toss it to them. 
and, you know, kind of just wave it at them. And all of a sudden, they're like, they get the ball, look at it, and they start flipping me off, saying, oh, like, really? go Red Sox. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> man, like, yeah, that all right. But, all the time, but, bro. but that happens, man. It's, you know, they love their team, and um, – I'm that's just lucky. I'm just lucky they didn't throw the ball back at yeah. me. But no, that's now cool, that man. happens all the time. That's that's good. So all right. So New York, L.A., both dope cities. Mm. I got some New York, L.A. The, not this or that, but which one is better? Okay. New York, L.A. So I think. Okay, we'll go with better weather. Oh, it's not even close. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Now this one is a good one. Food. Which one has better food? Because I, I can't. Uh, L.A. is dope, mm-hmm. but New York. Yeah, it's, it's gotta. It's gotta be New York. I love I think New York. Dog. I love. I love coming out here and getting some some great meals. But in New York, you can go to a different spot every single night. Every and it's gonna be night. incredible. And it's and half the time there's rats running right in front of the door. And you go in, and it's just the food is just magnificent. That's when you know it's good. That's when you see when you, when you see that out front. That's when you know it's good. It's Man, authentic. All them nights walking in New York, and I see the trash right there, and I smell the smell the feces in the air. You know what I'm saying from the sewers. I know I'm getting. I know I'm getting me a good meal tonight. You get some good. You get you know something good. Okay, so what about music? I'm I'm biased to 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 LA, man. I'm a, I'm I, a, so I grew too. up a California guy, man. It's, New York rappers, I feel like they're good, but they be like aggressive. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, they're kind of aggressive, and it's not you know it works for them. That's how they that's how they work. But I feel like the LA is just you know laid back, top down. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah we're laid back, laid back. We, we vibe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. We some LA dudes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what about the nightlife? Better nightlife. New York's great, but like, you know, some of these like rooftop, yeah. rooftop bars here scenes you, you got in LA, man, it's that's tough to beat on a summer night. I'm with man. you, and you yeah. like the 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 vibe is different. It's like a upscale. Everybody dresses yeah. up, smells nice, looks good, you know. And then yeah, I feel like the uh, clothes, attire is different. Like you gonna wear, you see some people wearing some crazy stuff here. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you see some in yeah, crazy in yeah. New York as well, but some gonna be off the wall here. Oh, you know always, what I'm always. So what about? Uh, I think this is a great question. Traffic, because New York got some traffic. You know, I'll take the New York traffic because I know at any point I can just get out and I can walk and probably okay. beat it there. Yeah. Here in LA, it's over. With. Yeah, you ain't walking nowhere. You you stuck on the highway, man. You highway. you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> what about shopping? That's New York, man. I think New York. Yeah, that's New York. I think New York too. Same thing. Like it's all it's all right there. Right there on Fifth. That's, and it's got like all the stores, man. Yeah. They gonna take all. Ooh, man. They gonna take all that three sixty that you just got. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you buy your first thing. Oh, yeah, whatever exactly, you buy. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Better place to live. Yeah. I, and I've heard. And I talking talking to CC. He told me he didn't live in like. I guess nobody really lives in the city, but right outside of it's beautiful. Like you don't know where you're in New York. And so I'm curious, you know what I'm saying? You've been in both. Mm-hmm. You know, which one Which one is a better place to live? Not talking, not taking any any baseball into account. Yeah. Man, it, L.A. for me. Yeah. Like, I love the weather. Mm-hmm. I love, like you said, kind of getting out of the city. Like, I, I love living in the city in New York, but you got to have that little escape, man. Right. You yeah, know, yeah, I feel yeah. like when you're at the stadium all day and you come back in in the city, like you never really turn it off. Yeah, but it's hard to here, hear. I feel like you can kind of drive out of the city. You can you can get lost in those hills, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. All right, so what about like which one would have a better fan base? And I don't know if it would be better. I, I, I don't know. To answer that one, I feel like they would be different. Because... LA's fan base is way they they watch the game, they're just more chill. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I feel in New York and in, even in Boston, yeah. and I learned to appreciate it, like you you start struggling, they're gonna boo you. Mm-hmm. I don't they don't care who you are. Yeah. And I appreciated that because it made me strap it on every day. Yeah. I gotta go perform. You know what I'm saying? So what, how 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 do you feel about that? Yeah, I agree. That's why that's one another reason why I love playing in New York is because it doesn't matter who you're playing that night. If it's 
you know, a last place team coming into town or if your Red Sox are coming to town, LA is coming to town, like the fans are going to bring it. Like if you are, if I'm 0 for 3 that night, mm-hmm. also now I'm 0 for 4 the punch, punch out, walking back to the dugout, they're going to let me know. Like, yeah. Man, I paid all this money to come watch you do something, and you ain't do nothing. Like, <laughs> man. You got, you got to pick it up, which, which, like you said, like it makes you strap it on every mm-hmm. single night. Like You got to bring it because these fans are watching. They know the game. They understand yep. the game. They understand what you're going through because they, they know the stats. They know how you've been hitting, how you haven't been hitting. So for me, I, I appreciate that because you know, they're right there in the corner with you. So when you have a big homer to win the game, and they're oh, right there man. with you cheering. They're going to be they, – they, you're on top of the world. Exactly, but if you have – you grind into a double play in the game, <laughs> they're going to let you know, too. They're buried. Yeah. So That's super cool. That's super cool. So, all right, so I got some fan questions. Favorite pitcher to face, and who's your favorite pitcher to face? And it's, you know, everybody just has a guy that you just love facing because you know when you face him, I'm going deep. And this has no shade to anybody. At all. I can't. I can't say it, man. I, I, I can't. I can't say it. I can't all say. Right, it. I, I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. You know. Well, I'll tell you mine. I'll tell you mine. Let me hear it. You, you remember Danny Duffy? Yeah. Oh yeah. I got to play with him. I talked to him, and no matter when I was facing Danny Duffy, I knew I was going deep. <laughs> he could not keep me in the yard, and he knew it. Yeah. He knew it. Yeah. And so you know, the, the I'll say my guy. You don't have to say your okay. guy. You don't want to jinx it. I feel yeah. it. That's the superstitious part that baseball players have that you guys don't understand because, you know what I'm saying, we, we just don't want to say it and then now we go 0 for 10 against this guy and we feel like saying it is what jacked it. It's a humbling game. Man. Yeah, <laughs> and it will. It, it very well It very well could. So who's your least favorite pitcher to face? Least favorite pitcher to face? I don't I just don't want to face him. Man, it's, it's my boy, it's my boy with the Rays, Tyler Glass now, man. Like mm-hmm. he's <laughs> he's nasty. Yeah, he's nasty. He nasty we just faced him coming back too. Oh and, yeah, man. And, and you know, I think we scored like what one or two on him. And I mean, he's just he's just good. Bro. He's good, man. And that's the thing is, I came up playing against him. I played with him in the fall league. You know, got to see him with Pittsburgh, and then once he got over to the Rays and really started figuring things out, man. But he's he's as tall as me. Yeah. It feels like he's just dropping the ball off in the yeah. catcher's glove. He's got that big curveball, looks just like the yeah. heater. He's working on like that little slider. cutter slider yeah. thing. It's didn't wasn't he like an Olympic or uh, his parents or I something? Think were his mom the, or something like that. Did, okay, because he's athlete. a super good athlete. Like he does backflips and yeah. all. Super really good athlete. Like, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You can tell by the way he pitches because he's you know athletic. On a I, I got I got a question for you right, though. Let's do it. Let me hear. It. You came up as a second baseman. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. And then you're gonna just move to the outfield yeah. and win every Gold Glove, and then also <laughs> be like, you know what? I want to play some. I want to play some short. You need me a short. You need a shortstop. I want to move to short real quick. Be turning double plays like it ain't nothing. <laughs> like how, how when I when I just moved to center field or moved to left, like that's that's still an outfield position, but that's still a tough adjustment from. But to go yeah. from the outfield to the infield, the next day you're playing right. Yeah. Like, I don't. I don't know that, how that. So when I was playing summer ball coming up, mm-hmm. not even this is in high school, I didn't have one team I played on. I had like four teams I played on. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because I split a lot of my time playing basketball. So I wasn't even playing baseball wow. at the time. And so I would go to like two basketball tournaments to one baseball tournament. Mm-hmm. And so I would just be like, you know, I'm not going to play this week. And then that's how I begot, began to be on four teams. So they would call me and be like, hey, we need a third baseman this week. Can you come play? Yeah, I'll go play. Can, we, need, we need you to come play short this week. We need you to come play second this week. We need you to come play center this week. And so I grew up doing it. And then I got drafted as a shortstop. And when I <clears throat> got drafted, I only played like 15 games. And then I got moved to second base. And then I went all up to the minor leagues at second base. And infield is my life, bro. <laughs> it's my life. It's the, it's the most fun I have playing. And so when I got moved to right, it was like, all right, well, I'm going to be the best right fielder like yeah. I can be. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we're going to apply ourselves, right? Exactly. You know, it's, exactly. it's hard. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the best right fielder I can be. And so I just got really good at it. And... Um, I kind of got stuck out there. Did they come to you and say, like, hey, we got Dustin Pedroia at second? Yeah, they had just signed. Bogey at short. Like, 
you're going to be in the big leagues. With, like, and we're going right. to put you in the outfield. Yeah. And then that that was it. That that's how that's how I play. And now get, being able that I'm a little older now, and I get to. There was a whole. There was a, a lot of things had to mm-hmm. be right for me to end up playing short and second, but. You know, it ended up being right, and I've, I've had the best time of my life. Gosh. So, so if I see, if I get to play infield, I see you going to chop it up while we're out there. So, let me let me let me uh, ask a couple more fan questions. Your Mount Rushmore of Yankee greats. Ooh, Yankee greats. I got to go, Yogi Berra, ten-time mm-hmm. World Series champ. Man, that's that's unheard of. Uh, Mickey Mantle. Yep. You know, Mick, man, just the MVP is what he did every single year playing mm-hmm. center field. Babe Ruth, obviously, and uh, Jeter, the captain. Yeah, man, just because I got a chance to see him growing up and you know what he did for the game. You know, not only just how he played the game, how he treated every single day, the c- competitiveness. Mm-hmm. Like it's that's what it's about, man. So I I would say for us to rap, man, like I think that's why you got the C on your chest, well, on your arm. <laughs> Because you do those same things. And I always remember that, bro. Like, and I know you will, you know, you know you Aaron Judge, right? But, you know, I had to learn these last couple of years, like, I can't ever question myself, you know what I'm saying? And so we go through these struggles and we go through all these things and, you know, we're going through life in general. And I don't know if whenever you decide to have kids and all those type of things, like, you're going to, I'm not going to say you're going to get lost, but you just, sometimes you kind of question yourself, bro. And just remember, you got to see you got everything. Everything is great for you, bro. And, and it's super, super dope to watch, especially to see you stay out of the media, see how when you're in the media, it's for positive things. Mm-hmm. And so I just want you to know, like, you know, for, for the rest of us normal people, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're super dope, man. You're super inspiring for us and, 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 the, and the kids as well. So, But I, I got to say the same thing, Mook. Like, you, man, you kind of paved the way. You know what I'm saying? Trying, like, man, trying, coming man. up at a young age and, like, like you said, bro, like, Every single time I'd watch you play against us or watch you on TV, like you were coming up in big moments, but you were never like the guy making it about you. Nah, it was never, never about bro. you, bro. It was about your teammates, helping your teammates out, man. And seeing that, like you're a superstar, you're the best player in the field, but you still made it about everybody else around you, man. That's where I think that's such a good lesson for the kids. TV. Yes, sir. Just remember that everyone, happiness lies with everyone else. Then it comes to you. That's it. We're on base with Mookie Betts and A.A. Ron Judge.